Hello and welcome. This is suitable for all examples as per. Look in the description to skip between the two sections. So, um, what I told you before in my other video is that alkenes go through addition reactions. Because we've got this double bond to mess around with, we can actually add stuff to it. And what we usually do, we can add halogens to it, such as bromine or chlorine. And that would end up as a di, whatever we added, alkane. So say for example, we have ethene over here, our fantastic ethene without the hydrogen atoms, which I should have drawn, but it's very long to do so. You do need to draw that in your exam. We add bromine. Bromine comes as a diatomic molecule. The thing is, most things in the group 7 periodic table uh, group 7 periodic table and oxygen as well and nitrogen they all come as a diatomic molecule so don't forget the Br2 that's why we end up as with a dibromoethane okay remember it would end up looking like this Br Br H H H H okay because the double bond has been opened Okay, the the overlap has been on overlapped to connect with the bromine. That's one way of putting it. And we end up with 1,2-dibromoethane. Okay, don't forget about the numbers and the positioning. That's very important because we have, we have a bromine on carbon 1 and 2. Um, this test is very useful for detecting alkenes because... In the laboratory, the one thing we will see is decolorization. Don't say that the thing will go clear because we don't know what the thing is, and go clear is is a GCSE term. So decolorization, I'm not gonna write, I'm gonna write it down. Is the proper word to say. Same thing with chlorine. We will react um, ethene with chlorine to make one, two, dichloro. Ethane. Remember, single bond and okay. And um, this happens on on room temperature, and it's also called halogenation because these are halogens. So, other thing we can do is react hydrogen to an alkene to make an alkane which is quite simple. Um, this is called hydrogenation and the same thing can be done with vegetable oil to make margarine. Anything which is kind of buttery or I cannot believe it's, but it's not butter is margarine. The more hydrogen we react with the vegetable oil, um, the more it hardens and the less able it is to spread. Um, so that is also hydrogenation. The conditions that we need is a nickel catalyst. We need something to speed up the reaction of this and nickels are man. We um, also platinum as well, but don't worry about that. I just remember nickel and we need it at a quite moderately okay temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. So that means we could put alkenes and hydrogen in an oven. Bang, alkane. Same thing with vegetable oil and hydrogen. Don't try that at home, please. Um, also, we've got an alkene and hydrogen bromide. This is called a hydrogen halide. Okay, and that basically makes, because we've only got one atom of bromine here or one atom of a halogen here, not like the two up here, that means we only end up with a bromoalkane, not a dibromoalkane. Okay, and so you'd be thinking, if we actually draw it out, we've got ethene, my favourite molecule for today. We react with hydrogen bromide. We end up with a bromine here and the hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. You might be thinking, well, what goes here? This hydrogen does. This hydrogen can go over here. Um, best thing about it is that because it's a single bond, it can be freely rotatable, unlike this alkene where we form cis and trans because we can't rotate it. 
Um, what else? We can react alkenes. Oh, by the way, um, here's the states as well. We can have an alkene that's liquid and we bubble through hydrogen bromide as a gas through reflux and we end up with bromoalkane. Um, also, we can react alkenes with steam, which is basically H2O as a gas. Um, with a with an acid catalyst with a high moderately high temperature and pressure to make alcohol We usually do this. Um, there is also another way we can do it, but that's in module 2 um, We can hydrate ethene. This usually happens in a cylinder um, With 300 degrees Celsius and 60 atmosphere, which isn't that bad Basically, you can't put alkene and steam in an oven because ovens usually go up to 250 degrees. So how does this actually happen? What is the mechanism in which we can do it? Well, we've got alkene here and we've got the fantastic bromine. The thing is with bromine, I like to draw it out like this, it's important that we draw it like this, is that bromine is, isn't a polar molecule, it's relatively spread out. Okay, it's it's re relatively neutral, but when it comes in contact with this carbon to carbon bond, this burst of electrons just there, what happens is that all these electrons, I'm going to draw it here by the way, it'll make life so much easier. All the electrons on the bromine are kind of scared. Okay, it's a bit, it's, it's Van der Waals forces, but the, the, the electrons are kind of scared and they move downwards, which induces a dipole so this becomes slightly positive because it's got less electrons right and this is oops oops and this is slightly negative because it's got slightly more electrons towards its side so what happens is that um this is now called an electrophile an electrophile is a species where it is attracted it's an electron deficient species sometimes where it is attracted to an electron rich source um, which in this case is this double bond and what happens is that the um remember if i if you looked at my other video um i told you to remember the electron pairs now we've got two electrons here right and these electrons are transferred to the bromine atom over there Okay, so it is, we denote that, we show this movement by a curly arrow, please, for the love of whoever, don't do a straight line, you will get it wrong, and it is not right, okay, curly arrows show the movement of a pair of electrons in the formation or breaking of a covalent bond, don't worry about that, so, we have, moved our electrons here and as a result because more electrons are coming the electrons in the bromine are even more scared they're being repelled even more so therefore they get transferred to this one over here and then they eventually break off so the bromine um forms a covalent bond with this carbon over here so it ends up looking something like with the H's in place and we've connected to the bromine and we've got one carbon here and we've got a hydrogen here, hydrogen there. It, it ends up like that, but as you can see, it looks a bit wonky, all right? It, it's not right because carbon always usually has four bonds and we've only got three here. So that means it is deficient in electrons that means we have a positive charge on the carbon and this is what we call a carbo carbon cation carbo cation and we've also ended up with a broken bond here it has broken through heterolytic fission where both the electron pairs have gone here. Homolytic fission is when each electron from the electron pair goes to each bromine atom. But seeing as both went here, it has gone through heterolytic fission. So we've got this carbocation and we've got the bromine um, molecule here with its two spared lone electrons. 
Now, it is strongly attracted to this carbocation. It's like two people in love. And therefore, the electrons get transferred to the carbo the carbon which is obviously deficient in electrons and we will end up with one two one two three one two three br br h h h h and we end up with one two dibromoethane and as i said over here one two dibromoethane Remember, in a laboratory, it would go from yellow to clear, it would decolorize, and you do need to write that in your exam. And that is it for um, reactions of alkanes. If you want to know more about polymers, uh, please look at my other video.